In a few for <laughs> In a few short seconds, I'm going to play your Lance Armstrong documentary you've probably never seen. And I think it's the best documentary of Lance Armstrong that nobody's ever seen. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share some more comments and criticisms. All right, let's get to it. team and the main goal of this program is do everything what we can in terms of planning and preparation to win Tour de France. Lance, we're going with the car to uh, until where you can ride. To prepare your clothes and some tea and stuff. Okay. Okay? What if I keep going? You can't. Huh? You cannot. Three meters of snow. From the side? The guy says you can, there's no way you can ride. There's no way. Who says that? Later to make it happen was not so simple. A physical and mental delivery here by Lance Armstrong. Five and a half hours he's been pedaling today. Like other teams, they, they didn't understand what, what exactly we were going to do when we said we are going to prepare for the Tour de France. Uh, but what are you, who is going to be our leader? I said, uh, Lance Armstrong. But he cannot climb, they say. And he's accelerated, he's out of the saddle, sprinting up this climb now. If you keep going, you can take the jersey, yeah? If you keep going, you can take the jersey, yeah? Lance Armstrong, as the clock ticks down, is racing to the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. Yes! He was yes! The first man yes! The it's certainly one of the biggest fairy tales this race has ever produced. A man that really was only given a 20% chance of living because of cancer is now turning to feel a part in the Tour de France. And it's a long time since we've seen a performance like this. Basically, I like doing the job. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the, the travel. I enjoy the sacrifice. But I really enjoy just just constantly seeing if it's going to continue to work. I mean, to me, that's fascinating that we have this, this template and we can just continue to run it over and over and over again and train hard and make sacrifices. And, and you know, just for, just in the name of sport, just to try and and win the, the biggest and the best bike race in the world year after year after year. As many of you know, it's been a trying winter for me and my U.S. Postal Service cycling team. In November of last year, a formal investigation was launched into our team regarding the alleged use of performance-enhancing drugs. I'm very happy to report today that we have received confirmation that the results of the testing of our urine samples have proven to be negative. To be clear, we have learned that our urine samples did not contain EPO or any other banned substance as we knew they would not. This investigation is, is going to be closed. 
we're going to be proven innocent. But when we're proven innocent, and we're proven that the only thing we've taken is a, bu is a bunch of hard work, and I wish we would write that story as well, and I think that's only fair. I look forward to racing again this week in France, and over the next few months, I plan to do a few other races here. And of course, on July 7th, I plan on defending my Tour de France title in pursuit of number three. All right, guys. Can I have a, a second? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. <laughs> With the team that we have here, every single one of us can win Circuit de la Sarthe. Not me. Every single one of us can win Circuit de la Sarthe. Johan came in on the team in 1999, and he really brought in uh, a lot of like confidence. Lance never really thought he could win the Tour de France. He never be believed, or truly believed he could win. And Johan came in and said, that's our objective. And he, and he told the rest of us that we could support him in winning the Tour de France. And... He's a guy that they can respect. Um, he's a guy that they know has ridden the Tour de France. He's been a contender at the Tour de France. He's ridden for the big teams. He's ridden for well-drilled teams. They can look at him and say, if he says it's like this, then he's talking from absolute experience. Yeah, it's, hard to, it's hard for, I suppose, Americans and Australians to imagine this is like, besides soccer, this is, this is, this is the sport to watch. At the start, you can come up and get our autograph, come and talk to us, whatever. Not many you know, big professional sports, the rock fans can get so close. And you'd have people that you probably never remember ever talking to pull out a photo of you with them five years ago. watch it on television, on portable televisions, and the, the race comes to them. Now, although they see it only maybe for uh, 20 seconds in some cases, they love it. So it's a three kilometer climb, and then we stay on small roads. We have another climb coming at 150, and then we go to the local circuit. Stefan or Lance, if you hear me, you have to help uh, and bring that break back. Eh? Only, only Christian and there's 16 guys in the front. It's not enough. It's not good. There's too many good time trialists in the front. Only Christian. Let's, let's put two, uh, two guys to pull here also with those guys. Are we going to ride? Guys, it's split in the front, so uh, Christian is in the second part. Eh? There's seven guys in the front and nine guys in the back. And Christian is in the second group. We have to go on there. Eh? Come on, eh? 58 seconds eh, for the seven first guys. 58 seconds. Usually, it gets pretty ugly towards the end of the race, and um, I don't know. I think I think Johan, you know, wasn't happy with what, the way it happened today, so I'm sure he'll want to be on the aggressive side, which is always fine. I grew up. Uh, I was also a cyclist, and I grew up. Uh, in the middle of uh, cycling, because everybody was uh, cycling where I live, so we we know exactly you know what they what the needs are. And uh... this is the drinks for today. 
during the race. This is the this is the rice cake or apple apple pies, and it's all homemade stuff. All the little things. There are so much little small things. All together, is it? It counts, so it makes the difference. The little things makes the difference, yeah. Good cake, yeah. Making sure that the, that the laundry is good done. Make sure that they have a good drink. Make sure that uh, everything is proper and nice. And, and also, you, you have to have a heart for, for, for the sport. <laughs> About yesterday. Um, I think the team made the wrong decision to not immediately react. Once Stefan uh, was dropped, 16 guys in the front, and even if Christian is the best of us for the moment, it's not uh, was not a good break. I know Lance was tired because of the, the plane, but there's we were four other guys. Eh? Today we have to go in the brakes, and we have to have always two guys in the brakes. So in the beginning, I would say let's go with the brakes, and if we see that nothing happens, attack ourselves. <laughs> Twenty-seven seconds for Tyler. Twenty-seven seconds for Tyler. So we pay attention now to the counter attack. Then there's kind of like a certain rhythm to the race. You know, everybody attacks in the beginning, kind of gets settled in. Maybe a, a small group of riders goes goes away, and everybody else kind of settles down. And then it's an opportunity to uh, figure out, you know, is it going to get colder? Is it going to get warmer? Is it going to keep raining? So you'll see a lot of guys going back to the car. The radio's not working so hard. And sometimes one guy from a team will go around and kind of collect clothing from certain guys and then go back to the car and drop it all off and then come back with some food. And then kind of it's also an opportunity to take a piss if you feel like you have to. Because later on in the race, you don't, you don't get to do that. <laughs> Tyler, yeah. you have two minutes on the peloton, and there's a guy, Siv Sivakov, from Big Matt. Yeah. He's 38 seconds behind. No, it's better to wait. Huh? If you need it's something, I can give it to you now. I'm, I'm going back to the peloton, and Big Matt will stay here. If something happens, I go back to the bunch now. Guys, let's not stay in the back. Let's not stay in the back here, eh? What has happened is you become dependent on these radios. And also, you can't think for yourself, you know? You're out there and just like brain dead. Did he copy? The radios suck today. These radios suck. You have a new one. Huh? You have a new one. No, I have an old one. Hey, I tell you, you have a new one. I guarantee you have an old one. It's all beat up. It's a brand new one you have. No. Uh, the radios are kind of hit and miss. You know, we got some new ones. This is not a new one. Oh, this is not a new one. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Try that one. Yeah. Try it. Try it. Okay, I copy you. El pelotón no oyes nada? No estoy nada. I do not understand you. In the beginning, everything looks a little bit hectic and uh, problematic, and sometimes you don't see how you're going to solve a problem, but. Uh, mass chaos that's why it's good that we do these kind of races before the tour and you know and and we get these things strained out <laughs> call me on the radio if you need me And seriously, it was like five seconds later. Yeah. And luckily, I got on that big guy's wheel. Yeah, yeah. It's a big, it's a nice draft. I think one thing that people ignore about Lance Armstrong is that his training is much more like a, 
a track and field athlete's training. He trains for specific goals. You know, certain things we can always upgrade. I mean, technically, I can look for speed in the wind tunnel and change my time trial bike. Or we can take the climbing bike, which is what we, we did last year, take it down from nine kilos down to seven kilos. Those are evolution. But at the end of the day, you know what's the hardest thing? is the, the hardest thing is to just get back to the level that you were at before. That sucked. <laughs> How was the position? Good. good. That was a good thing. Well, we can take it off. Send it. Yeah, this bike is really different. If you've got a guy who's capable of winning the Tour de France, then you have to base your whole season around that. You, you have to have a team that is ready on day one for 22 days of battle. Hard training today. Very, very hard training. I need more condition. Yeah. But it's good for the tour. <laughs> The Circuit de la Sarthe was, uh, I think, a good race for a couple of reasons. It's really only preparation, getting the rhythm, trying something out in a time trial, but in, in a more relaxed way. Lance uh, was not really focused. He came back from, from the States, the press conference, uh, and that always reflects on the team. If the leader is uh, not really doing the race to win, then the motivation is not the same. Circuit of the Sarth is a, is a great race. You know, beautiful race, it's a beautiful countryside, and it's good turning, but it's, uh, it's only Circuit of the Sarth. And uh, we have much bigger fish to fry. If you start the Tour de France in July, and the team hasn't had any victories at all. Everybody's pretty nervous. The sponsor's nervous, the director's nervous, the bike riders are nervous. But if you've had a, a good campaign in the races leading up to the Tour de France, then the team is just that little bit more relaxed. The sponsors feel as if they've got their, their dollars worth of publicity out of the team. So therefore, you know, the pressure is not as great as it would be as if you were going in without any score at all. Daar Vins aan het eind van de Van Akkerenstraat ligt de aankomst. Pissix gaat zich optrekken. Ah, Hier het door het smalle gaatje gaat hij links demareren. En Matan moet niet reageren. En nu gaat die sprint op gang komen. En het is Wezenman die naar het wiel van de Pissix moet. Pissix heeft 10 meter. Pissix nog altijd. Daar komt Wezenman. Wezenman is sterk. Maar ook Van Bon komt daar nog aan klampen. Van Bon komt daar naast Wezenman. Gaat Van Bon hier winnen of is het Hinkepie? Van Bon of Hinkepie? Het is Hinkepie. George, congratulations. Nice victory, well, and you know, needed it. I don't know if I won yet. Yeah, you won. Are you sure? Yeah, we are sure. Absolutely sure, Carl. How, how sure? Hundred percent. It's sure. You win. You win Gent Wevelheim 2001. It's sure. Uh, uh, Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, but it's the final finish. They're looking at the photo. It's neat. They're looking at the photo. You don't need it. You win. I will not believe it. You really win, George. He says I won. He says he's sure, but <laughs> you don't believe me. <laughs> if, if it's true, then I'm very happy, but I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, our commentators, they confirm it, you win. Really? Then, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> I, very, I might very much um, been needing a win, you know. My, my directors and the managers, it's been a long time since I won, but they, they really believe in me, and they, every race they, they say, George, you can win, and they make me believe. And I know that I'm that I can win. I just have to have the everything right. But um, I hope this just gives me confirms uh, more victories to come. I hope. So now you're one of the favorites for Paris Roubaix, you know? <laughs> that's that's where um, my one of my main things. Yes, of course I want to win for Roubaix. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I wish you good luck for Sunday. Guys. Let's have a toast on George.
First, uh, <laughs> it's the first victory of, in a classic of, of this team, I think, in the history of US Sports School. It's the first victory in a classic, although it's not a World Cup race. Let's say that again, the Wilbergham is a big classic, so thanks, George. Thanks. And uh, let's toast on another one on Sunday in Paris Roubaix. Yeah. <laughs> So my title in the team is, is actually is assistant sports director. So, but it means uh, we have so many races. We have uh, riders enough to do a double schedule. So uh, it means Johan is almost all the time on on the road with a part of the team around Lance, and I'm always almost always on the road with the rest of the team. I'm the only guy who's on time ever. The races are, especially up here, are very stressful. Pretty much the war zone every race we do up here. So. You like it or you hate it, eh? You, you have to be crazy about this race. You have to be mentally sure that you can do it. But the most of the riders, if they see this, they are done, eh? If it rains, that would be terrible. The objective for a, a winner of Paris Roubaix is to have the maximum riders of the team around you uh, as far as possible. When they, they come into a position of stress at a big event like the Tour de France or a big event like Paris Roubaix, then you'll see what their weakness is. But so far, they haven't been put into that position. At the start of a race like Pyro Bay, there are ten guys who can win. It's not a race where you need good luck. It's a race where you've got to make sure you don't have any bad luck. Three kilometers to go, we go under a bridge, we take a left, then we have a slight uphill, and then it's uh, becoming more narrow. So uh, from now on, um, we stay there good in the front with George, everybody. Yeah? And these are very, very slippery indeed. And this only the first stretch of 24 sectors. Looking down that long line there, somebody's gone straight down, and that looked like one of the riders from Domo. So guys, George crashed. We have to chase, but we don't panic, eh? Don't panic. It was like ice skating out there. After the third time I crashed, I just started laughing. It's sort of not cycling for everybody. It's sort of just the battle on wheels, man. So, George, it looks like, uh, I told you before, uh, it will be a very uh, very hard one today, a very individual race. So, uh, you are in good position there. Just uh, take once in a while your pool. Not too hard, the whole thing in reserve. And you will see it. Um, it's going to be very hard today, but be confident, you are strong, man. Come on, George. Yeah, I think uh, if it comes together, George will win the race. Yeah. It's, it's very nervous in the peloton, everybody's stressed. He, he doesn't get nervous when, when the peloton gets nervous. That's a part of the talent if you want to do good in this race. to the front there. We don't leave George alone there, eh? We're back at the sharp end now, and George Hincapie of the USA is riding a brilliant race. 
but you see when you do have the form you ride over the cobblestones so easily Incapi is very relaxed here he's picking his own line over these cobblestones George you're fantastic you are fantastic eh Hincapi, I think, has gone down as well there. That was Hincapi just picking himself up. Wilfred Peters is riding by him right now. Don't panic, don't panic. Refine your tempo, eh? Don't panic. Very good, George. Very good, very good. At the moment, oh, you see, he's slipping all over the place. He's all slipping all over the place, Paul. You're right, he's in big trouble, George. He's right now. George, don't panic, don't panic. You're OK. And Hincapi cannot get himself rolling at all. Go on, George, go on, go on. We cannot do anything, we're behind. George, don't panic, don't panic, you're okay, don't panic, you're very good. George is in all sorts of difficulty now, trying to get his bike going again. I'm, I'm wondering if he's got a flat tyre. Don't panic, you can handle this, you can handle this. George has got a flat tyre, and there it is. This time he's taken the wheel out, and he's called up the service. Well, there he was, it's very difficult, he was riding so well, no panic at all. He waited for the neutral service there to come up and give him a front wheel, and he's up and riding once again, but he will have lost his place in that very select group right now. Come on, guys, Eki, Cedric, Benoit, Matthew, Tony. There is too many people in the front. Eh? It's not possible eh, that we have a guy, one of the favorites of the race, and you leave him alone there. Eh? Come on, you have to go on and we have to come back. Now they start to attack. Yeah. <laughs> This is the escape now, trying to chase down the leader. George, look, listen. You are so strong. It's like there's two different races. You ride twice as fast as the other guys. So be conservative, wait your moment, you will be able to do whatever you want in the final. Coming right up into third position is another Domo Farm Freaks rider, that's Cerves Carnarvon. They've ridden off the front right now. I would have expected George to attack on the next section of cobblestones, but now he's in a very bad situation because he's got two, two men from the same team, the team of the leader, Wilfred Peters, and they will not work with him at all. He's, he's speaking with him, he's speaking with but him he's now. still 50Ks to go. 50Ks to go. Perfect, man. What? Yeah. Puncture, puncture, George Puncture. Hey! Ze hopen weer op te worden met Duitsland! the lone leader and now that just might give the little pause which requires the little slowing in the speed and that will give Johan Muzer a chance to come back and that will make six men at the front four of them belonging to one team Domo Farm Freed. There are 11 kilometers left to the finish and Surveys Canavan has just launched an attack and George Hincapi is chasing him and they will attack consistently and insistently all the way to the finish line George, if you have something left, we have nothing to lose anymore. Eh? It's going to be a man against man here. Eh? They're trying to snap the accordion here. They're trying to get a Domo Farm Freaks rider off the front to get the victory. But Hincapi is going to try and challenge all of these moves. Hey, come on, you're the best here. You're the best here. In uh, professional cycling, when you have one guy against four, you lose. 100%. <laughs> No way, no way to win. They're going to keep attacking all of the time and somebody is going to catch out George Hincapi. This again looks like Cerves Canar and leaping off the front right now. And this is what the guys from Domo Farm Freaks are trying to do. They're trying to isolate the rider off the front. They're trying to keep George Hincapi in the back.
our team lost the race in the first part until the first cobble section. So uh, there's, uh, there's not so much we, we can say about that. Um, there has been crashes, there has been punctures. That's not really an excuse because everybody had uh, punctures and crashes. Is George Hincapi on the left of our picture here? It's going to be close. I don't think it's a one, two, three, because Vainstein gets it for Domo. Hincapi is four. We were bad. We had, a, we had a bad day as a team in general, but the team was super strong in Flanders and Gamble and um, The guys that we have are class riders, so I'm not worried about who we have. Um, maybe we'll get one or two more guys. He goes, he goes with Ewan's car to Van der Poel. Oh. Stefan, you go with Johan's car, first one. The funny thing is that like after the race, it's like this big circus going on behind me. You put my rain bag in the truck for Camembert? You know, everybody gets back, showers, pack the cars. Okay, who's going where? Okay, this bag goes here, this bag goes there. Okay, you get in this car, this car goes you know, to Belgium, this car goes to the airport. Yeah. So you in Amsterdam? Yeah, yeah, or Dunkirk. Over the years, I've become a lot more comfortable here in Europe. And yeah, I miss home, but it's not like uh, the early days when you know I was just counting the days to go home. Now it's uh, you know I really enjoy living over here, and uh, it's a lot different than the United States, but it's uh, but it's a nice difference. Watch me movie? Hello, man. Hello, man. Hello. Oh, hello, man. Hello, man. Hello. Stefan's trying to turn albino. <laughs> He's no, 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 albino. I just want to prove that I'm a pure Norwegian <laughs> blonde white. It's, it's your life, you know? You have to like it more than, than, uh, than anything. Step on this. It's like a portable gym. Oh <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> Usually only Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Because I don't want to get too big, you know? I got my own little coffee maker and stuff. But you got to have one thing that you can uh, make your own. The classic thing is all the guys give me shit about it. They'll, they'll all secretly come by when nobody's looking at me. Coffee rings? <laughs> It's just like taking a little piece of home. At seven kilometers to the bottom of the San Nicolai. Good job, Christian. Come on, very good, eh? I've been riding bikes since I was four years old. It's not that complicated. But it starts to get kind of complicated when you're going 60 miles an hour down the, down the hill. I've seen guys who go head on into cars. You go off the road, crashing cobbles, puncture. No, I just had a bit of a crash. A bit of liquid on the kneecap there. That should be right. It's nearly the end of the classics. The first thing we, we want to do after a crash or an injury is to start riding again. Good job, Christian, good job! Good job, Christian, good job! One minute, one minute! Now it's, it's my dream. I believe, I believe in my dream. <laughs> you have to be a little crazy about the whole thing. You have to, you have to, yeah, you have to love it. If, if you're a couple of weeks or a couple of months out of it, uh, you miss it already. <laughs> Naturellement, euh, de la part des, des, des organisateurs, du public français, des journalistes européens, il y avait un phénomène de curiosité pour cette équipe américaine qui a fait des, des bonnes performances dans le Tour de France. Mais je crois qu'avec US Postal, euh, une marche supplémentaire est, 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 est arrivée parce que l'équipe US Postal s'est un petit peu européanisée en présent un directeur sportif européen et plusieurs coureurs européens qui possèdent la vraie culture du Tour de France, du cyclisme européen. Et je crois que cet apport de la culture du cyclisme européen, de Johan Brunel en particulier, a été déterminant pour faire progresser l'équipe américaine US Postal. 
Et ça n'est pas une surprise pour moi de, de constater qu'une équipe américaine telle que US Postal aujourd'hui est comparable à une grande équipe européenne dans son, dans son comportement, mais avec un champion d'exception qui est Lance Armstrong, elle est parvenue au, au succès deux années consécutivement. Le Tour de France, vous savez, c'est presque 100 ans d'expérience. Les coureurs européens, les équipes européennes ont les, les acquis fondamentaux de cette expérience. Et c'est quelque chose qui manquait un peu aux équipes américaines. Aujourd'hui, les choses sont à jour. You couldn't ask me to be any more motivated for this race. I love the country, I love the region, I love the race. Um, it means, it means it's a special event. We have a great team here with Lance and um, Christian and Cedric and Nekomov and Chachu. We have a really super squad and I think, I think we can do a really good job tomorrow. When Lance hits a goal to win something, every, all the competitors should watch out. So. He's given us the word, Amstel Gold, so we're going to be there to back him up, see if he can win it. I think we have never had such a strong team like we are having here. But it's very important that a race like this, especially when it's raining, first of all, that we do it like as a team race, that we don't have individuals, eh? that we ride as much as possible in the front. Benoit, you stay from the start with George and Cedric from the start with Lance. Eh? We know that we have guys that can win the race, so I want uh, the 100% effort from the whole team. Eh? So guys, we see yeah, the, peloton, the peloton is already in different groups. It's going to be the whole day very important that we ride in the front, eh? because it will be it will it will happen any time. Eh? Everybody in the front. Eh? Amsterdam Gold is. Uh... It's a very nervous race from the beginning until the end because they always hit small villages with a lot of people on the road. So everybody is, is exciting about the circus. A lot of corners and roundabouts. And, uh, and because of the wind and the rain, they are riding in you know, echelons, you know? And that makes it very dangerous. They have to pay attention, so it's, it's a nervous race. That's a good situation for us now. We have uh, George and Chechu in the front here in the group with more than three minutes on the, on the bunch, so... George and Chechu, seven minutes, seven minutes on the bunch. Siete minutos. Seven minutes. Hey, this is serious, eh? So, uh, perfect, eh, guys? Perfecto, eh? Muy bien. Venga, venga. It's good for a guy like Lance to have riders of the caliber of George and Eki alongside him because tactically in a race, If George Hincapie gets into a breakaway, that takes the pressure completely off Lance, because it forces all the other teams to chase. So uh, Lance and uh, Cedric and Christian, this is uh, what's left from the peloton. We have three guys here, and uh, George and Chechu up front, so uh, we are in a perfect situation. Eh? Christian and uh, Cedric, Make sure that we always keep Lance as good as possible in front. And Lance, you have to uh, you have to wait and gamble, eh? 
Lance Armstrong on the attack now with Eddie Mazzolini. But it's quite strange the way he's going off the front right now, Phil, because I don't think he actually wanted to attack. He was in a leading group of riders, and it was as if they almost just let him ride off the front. So for the moment, it looks, uh, it looks good. The guy with, who is with Lance, he also works together with him, so that's, uh, that's also a good sign. This is the chaser now coming along, and I would say that's around about 15 seconds just now. Decker is uh, coming back to uh, you and Mazzolini now. He's like 50 meters behind you. Three riders in the front group now. Decker has joined Arns Armstrong and Eddie Mazzolini, so that's going to be good for this Armstrong group because behind, Rabobank won't chase. Armstrong really is riding like a man possessed. No obvious tactic other than to get out and give himself a real hard workout, and he's hurt. Mazzolini. The thing that always amazes me, Phil, about Lance Armstrong is he picks his points in the season. He comes out to test himself to make sure he's on course for the Tour de France. Lance Armstrong uh, putting on a fine show here and showing us, I think, Paul, that we are indeed seeing a man preparing for the Tour de France. Two kilometers to the bottom of the cowbell. How are you? You think you can drop him on the cowbell? Or is he strong? <laughs> Superb piece of cycling by the American Lance Armstrong, and he's been called and joined by Eric Decker. Lance, play it cool, eh? Play it cool, eh? Remember, eh? They need a victory in the Gold Race a lot more than we do. That's a big advantage for us. Lance, Decker is getting nervous, eh? and the Roy also, eh? They're really very nervous. Now, this is Johan Brunel here, the young manager of the US Postal Services team that Lance has a lot of respect for. A few words of wisdom. Unfortunately, I can't hear what he's saying. It would be interesting to know what he's going to tell him right now. Lance, you have 40 seconds on Mazzolini and 1 minute and 10 seconds. 1 minute and 10 seconds on the group of Museo, but for the final, the last kilometer, stay in his wheel. Eh? Don't come out of his wheel. Remember 99, eh? you can beat him like that. Now, this is going to be a most intriguing final kilometre now. But let's not forget that just behind us, we've got Serge Baguet, who is absolutely boring down on these guys. And the last check we had, in fact, was at 20 seconds, and here he is now. He's under the kilometre to go. This could be quite dramatic. And the other two are going slower and slower. This is almost a track sprint, a max sprint against these two on the front decker. Looking over his shoulder, he's keeping up to the far side. <laughs> Decker starts to sprint from first position. Armstrong's coming. Well, Decker's been forced to lead out now. This is a perfect occasion for Lance Armstrong. Armstrong, I think, although he's dodging around the back, he would have come by now. He is not going to get round Eric Decker. Decker wins the goals. And Lance Armstrong second again, but quite honestly, he should be happy with that because his form is coming. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. George and Chechu were in there. It was a big group. It was a good group with Schmil, with Petito, with uh, George. So that uh, nobody had to work in the peloton, and uh, then when the group was caught, there was only 37 guys left at the end, with uh, five guys from us. And then Lance attacked, and it was, was, was finished. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's, in, he's in good shape. The team was very good. I mean, we had a good team also. Eh? Here uh, was uh, Eki, uh, George, Jechu, Victor Hugo, Cedric, Christian, Benoit, Lance. It's eight good guys, eh? Of course, of course. No, no, we, we, we rode the perfect race. It's not uh, just uh, Rabo went was stronger, that's all. Close. Yes.
Oh man, the next month is crazy. We go a lot of travel, fly all around, look at courses, train hard. The good news is my family finally arrives next week. See them on Wednesday for the first time and seems like two months. So that'll make things easier. But now we do our, our regular uh, boot camps. It's the end of the first racing period of Lance, but it's also like the start of the real Tour de France preparation. And the fact that he's in such a good shape to start uh, these training camps is uh, it's a very, very positive thing to know. And in the race, how far is this? A lot of athletes in the old school, like myself, when we raced, we raced to reach fitness. Lance and his team train for specific goals. And I think that's the difference. And I think maybe one or two of the older fashion teams have maybe not quite figured that out yet. <laughs> I think these would be this. Go back to Brezel. We're in Brezel. Yeah. Where's that? Here. Oh, yeah? And then this yellow road? That's too big. That's too big. It's a small one, eh? It's too big, yeah. Ça veut dire aussi qu'ils se sont compris pour travailler toute la première partie de l'année pour le Tour de France. Et ce qui m'impressionne beaucoup, c'est que ces deux hommes, au mois de mai, au mois de juin, effectuent la reconnaissance presque complète du Tour de France. Tout droit, Tom. Tout droit, Tom. Ils, ils, ils reconnaissent les cols, les difficultés, avec beaucoup de professionnalisme. Ce sont les seuls qui font ça parmi les grands champions. Et c'est une, une des clés de la réussite de Lance Armstrong, c'est cette, cette euh, appréciation commune, partagée, de la manière d'aborder le, le Tour de France. You see the Fort Alamo back there? The what? Fort Alamo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Western village, it said. <laughs> This is year is going to be a very tough year for us. Third, a third year in a row, we try to win a Tour de France. So that's, that's something very difficult. I mean, I know that getting back to those levels, getting back to the speeds that I've ridden the last two tours, uh, if I can do that, then then I'll be close. I'll be I'll be in the race. I'll be competitive. When you have a, when you have a teammate who can win, win the, the whole race, you, you, you want to join that. It's, uh, cycling is a team sport, and uh, I feel like I'm a part of, of his, of his um, victory. My biggest value to this team is supporting Lance in the Tour de France. It's the biggest race in the world. And you know, if you can win the Tour de France, you can beat the back in every other race all year long, and your, your season's still been a su success. Uh, he knows that he will need all those guys in the month of July more than 100%. I mean, they cannot save 1% for themselves. It goes beyond just making a 100% effort on your bicycle. Um, making a 100% physical effort. We go a lot deeper than that, and I think it shows um, when we're working for him. I've said this many times before, I don't need to be out here for money, I don't need to be out here for, for fame, because these things I don't really care about. Um, but I do care about working hard and, and, and fulfilling um, the plan and the dream of, of, of being a competitive athlete, being a professional athlete. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's me versus the other guys, and, and, and that's what makes me happy. That's what keeps me going. It's strange, it just changes. Three kilometers like that.
Yeah, I mean, it's like, there's no snow right there. Eh? There's no snow right there. No. And then... It's avalanche. Yeah. What, what? No, I want to ride. I think I want to ride a little more, you know? Why don't you do another uh, 10 kilometers of uphill? I'll go down 10K and come back. Hey, thank you, man. 10K. That's what it takes to win the tour. Why? Training in this weather. Nobody sees that. Hey, you know what? When the soup is good, all is good. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> then I caught. <laughs> a lot of people critique Lance Armstrong saying, Lance Armstrong destroyed people's lives. I'm like, well, how many lives did Lance Armstrong actually destroy? For every single one you can show me, I can probably show a thousand he benefited from. I made so much money from Lance Armstrong. I worked at a Trek dealership and bikes, I would sell bikes just so easy. All the fat bankers come in, 10 grand on the table, Get a Trek Madone or a Super Light or a 59, a 59 SSL or SSL SLX and all this stuff. Like, this is walking out the door, Jura A7800 group sets. People just live strong jerseys, everything, mate. It's just flying out the door because of Lance. So, I made a lot of money. When I went to France, right, watched the Tour de France, I saw the tourists and stuff and the tourists. And yeah, Lance changed the bike industry with carbon. He made Trek what Trek is today. He made Nike and Oakley and Juro, you know as they are big as they are in cycling today, Lance made all that. Lance just changed the whole game. So people say, Lance destroyed people's lives. I don't know anyone whose Lance lives was destroyed by Lance. Some people go, oh, Betsy Andrea. It's like Betsy made hell money from 60 Minutes, etc. And her husband, Frankie, he made hell money on the Tour de France team. Now he's, because of that, he's like a reporter and journo for the Tour de France. So it's a big fallacy that Lance destroyed people's lives. That's just like, that's just a soundbite some people use. So anyway, that's my comments and criticisms on that one. I knew all along Lance was on the hot sauce. He's a Nike athlete. No, Nike ain't signing no fucking natties, mate. They're signing the, the top dogs, the big dogs, the Serena Williams, full natty bright athletes. They want the best. And to be the best, you won't cope unless you're dope. There you go. Anyways, a good doco. Bit of propaganda, a bit of advertising, a bit of like naive fairy tale bullshit. But captured the essence of cycling. Get out and ride your bike. Doesn't matter if you're racing or not. Just get out there, ride your bike to the shops, have fun, burn fat and oil. We'll see you on the road. We've got some more documentaries coming up. Give someone a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, see you out there.